for the final time in the regular season, the BeamNG Monster Jam Series will host a 14-driver event here in East Rutherford, New Jersey at the MetLife Stadium. For these 14 drivers, they know what they need to do to make it in on points to the World Finals, and we'll see which one can accomplish the feat of winning here tonight at the MetLife Stadium. It's about that time, so put it up, let's get it on. Made it this far, time to show the world was number one. Number one, pull it up to the line, let's do it. Let's do it. Anything in my way, I'm running through. I'm running through. I watch the lights and my hands are sweaty. I hear the people screaming, so you better get ready. Yeah. Cause when it drops, I'ma take the shot, rock the spot, make it hot. Cause it's about that time. It's about that. It's about that. It's been a long time. It's about that time. It's about that. Cause it's about that. It's been a long time. It's the final event of the regular season of the BMG Monster Jam Series, and we're here out in the East at the MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. I'm Jora Casting Alongside me in the booth, it is Trey Bardo and Trey. After 11 very, very crazy events so far this season, we're here for the 12th and final one for 14 of these drivers. Their goals may be different. For some, they're below the cut line, need a really good event. For some, they're right near the cut line, need to just perform decently enough to stay in or just get in. And then for one driver here, the last driver to go out, Jordan Stout Trey, he's here for the championship in terms of the overall point standings. How is this going to all play into this 14 truck event here tonight? Well, let's just hope that these guys can fill out a clock. All right, that's one. And two, I mean, you got to expect them to go be going big nonstop, right? It's the last one of the regular season. It's, it's legit now. I mean, legit, legit, go big or go home. Exactly. For some of these drivers, if they don't go big here tonight, in a week's time, they're going to be in the last chance event, and they won't get that week off. So we'll see which of these 14 drivers can go out and cl uh, claim the victory here tonight in East Rutherford. We'll go take a look at the Field of Trucks to Freestyle. Kicking off tonight will be Nathan Orman in the Whiplash, then we have Hunter Reed and Jester and Matthew Burnett in the Overkill Evolution. Matt Moso and Reptoid, Angel Gutierrez and El Diablo, and Derek Fendel and Bad Company. And then Mathis Wells is in the Earthshaker, Jay Brando and El Toro Loco, and Cody Anderson behind Pirate's Curse. Aaron Abel, Monster Mud Dalmatian, Keegan Thompson and Northern Nightmare, and Bronson Minnick and Avenger. And then the final two, Justin Zedell and the Gravedigger, and as we mentioned, Jordan Stout in Max D. So here we go, Trey, the first driver of the night, and it's a driver who needs a very good run here tonight in East Rutherford. It's Nathan Orman in the Whiplash, enters below the top 20 in points, so if he wants to make it in, he needs to start out freestyle in a very, very big way and fill these 90 seconds with magical tricks and try and find a way to put out a really big score like Nicholas Voorhees did last night in the Toxic, where he went out first, got a 23.5, ended up finishing fourth in that event. Yeah, I mean, it goes to show you that even if you are first, I mean, Joe, we've seen it multiple times. doesn't mean you, you can't have a shot at winning this thing. There's how many times throughout this season alone that someone in first finished probably, what, top five, top three, win, or won it? Yeah, first this season has actually been a pretty good place to go out. Uh, statistically, they've gotten inside the top six most of the time. So, I mean, it's been a very good place. And Nathan Norman so far making a good place. He's airing that whiplash truck out oh. and getting a little crooked, but put it down. He's midway through the run. He's had a very solid run so far, but he's definitely finds some wow factors if he wants to put up a very big bar to set for the 13 drivers going after him. Yeah, he's definitely got to uh, take a little bit of notes from, you know, the, the last event here and figure out what he needs to do to set a bar just like it. So far, Joe, he's got the momentum going for him, right? He's got some nice moves, a couple of sky wheelies, a, that little bit of a, a sketchy moment there. And then, I mean, right now, I, I don't know if he's still kind of feeling out the track or if he's really comfortable yet. Well, he's into the final 15 seconds, so now is when he's going to have to start going really big. Here he goes for a back loop as the first truck out. Perfectly completed. Now he's got to back up. That's going to cost him time. Can he get one final move out into the final five seconds? He guns it up and over the pod. A very nice launch, and that will be it for Nathan Orman in the whiplash. And he flips the truck. <laughs> Well, he almost made it the entire time without ruining the truck. Well, he did make it the entire time. He just, uh, about a second after is when he ruined it. 
<laughs> oh, so close to a clean truck, Joe. Oh, so close. But for Ormond, it was a very solid run, but I just don't know if it's going to be enough to hold the bar in a pretty big way to start out the night. I mean, it's actually going to be a very solid score, but I just don't know if it's going to be enough to get him up inside where he needs to in terms of the points. Yeah, I definitely see where you're coming at, and, and I got to agree with you. I mean, it was a nice run, but it wasn't anything – you know, spectacular, but I guess we're going to have to see how the judges are feeling tonight. Yes, we'll have to see how the three judges feel here in the MetLife Stadium. The scores are in. Pretty decent way to start out the night for Nathan Ormond. It's a 21.5 early on here in the Whiplash. And we mentioned how Ormond needs a good run here tonight to get his way in. For Hunter Reed in the gesture, he needs a very, very, very good run. In fact, I'd call it the perfect run that he needs here tonight. He's so far below the cut line, Trey. If he has anything other than a win here tonight, he's already going to a last chance event. Well... I guess you know what his agenda is going to be then, right? It is to go very, very big. And so far, we've seen it, Trey. The first few hits have been anything but ordinary. They have been high-risk, high-reward hits. And so far, the reward has paid off. The risk has not bitten him quite yet. But Hunter Reed, if he keeps going this big, can he survive the final 60 seconds? That trip looking very bouncy so far. Yeah, it's, uh, I feel like that's not the first time we've seen this truck be very bouncy, though. Oh, maybe he likes Oh, like that! Oh. He's not going to like it if it's like that, though. He's upside down. He's still trying to save the truck. Well, that's where the bounciness comes into play. Oh! Oh, my God, it worked. How'd that work? Uh, bounciness? <laughs> I guess so. Well, now he has about 30 seconds left to fill the clock out. Turn that big save if he can fill the clock out. We might see ourselves a new leader. Oh, oh he's upside down again. Oh. oh. Well, that's not going to be running. Yeah, I don't think he's saving that one. Nope. Nope. And I'm sure uh, I'm sure he might have to pay some damages. <laughs> it's not the first time this season someone had to, right? And it might not be the last either, even though it's the last regular season event. But right here, I mean, this was just perseverance paying off for Hunter Reed. I mean, this truck, I mean... Like, look at this. It's even sitting on its side, almost coming back over, and finally one final hit of the gas puts it back onto the four wheels. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've learned to stop questioning how these guys save some of these things here. But right here, Joe, the, it, it didn't help. No, it did not. He goes over. He tries to save the truck, and unfortunately when he tries to save it, it goes towards oh. the wall, and he gets That's stuck. broken. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, for Hunter Reed, he didn't fill the clock with 25 seconds on the clock. Straight 5.5s gives him a 16.5. Where I know Hunter Reed is going to a last chance event next week. So unfortunate for Hunter Reed as now Matthew Burnett comes out to overkill Evolution. Burnett, one of the better BMG Monster Jam drivers over the history of this series, but finds himself not in a good position, not in a good position on the track as well. So he's able to save it right there. Great job there, but not in a good position in terms of the point standings. He really needs a good run here tonight to put himself up above. And so far, Trey, he's starting out once again, just like Hunter Reed, high risk but high reward moves. I was going to say, if you start out like that, Joe, then we are, we're, we're, we're in for a treat, right? Or uh, maybe uh, a little bit of nervousness. Oh, oh my gosh! I'm going to say we're in for a treat. I think we are in for a treat. Matthew Burnett, he's given out a lot of treats over his Demon G Monster Jam career. And this could be yet another one if he can try and fill out the clock. He's nearly halfway through the run, the Overkill Evolution so far, keeping the truck on all four wheels somehow, some way. And we'll see if he can try and pick it up even more. And so far with how this run is going, you might think that Nathan Norman is already shaken, even though there's still a good amount of time left on the clock. Yeah, definitely. You, uh, I mean, Joe, I feel like you're, you're always shaking in that hot seat. I think you are. Oh, he's going over. Oh. He, he barrel rolled over the berm. He's back on all four wheels. That was very, uh, well, what's the word I'm looking for? Elegant? Uh, yeah, 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 that's the one. Well, here's a back poop, which might be elegant as well. Oh, my gosh, oh. he bounces off the front tires. Wow. He almost uh, over-rotated that by a lot. I don't know if the judges are going to like that one very much, <laughs> but he's got five seconds left here. Joe, what else is he going to be able to do? Oh, he's flinging oh, my the goodness. truck around. You know who he looked like right there? A lot of people yesterday. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, you could name probably half the field and it looked like it. <laughs> yeah, he also flung his hood into that tunnel. I don't know if you saw that, but somehow that hood went into the tunnel. And here's that barrel roll up over the berm. Very, very nicely touched. done. I don't even know if he touched the body. He oh, he might have touched the hood. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then right here, nice backflip, just a little bit under rotation, and then Woo! almost overdid it. Yeah, and but then luckily he slams in reverse, and that almost overdid it too. <laughs> you want to talk about bouncing this, Joe? That's it right there. Then I want to watch this hood you were talking about. Yeah, so we'll All see right. if we could see so, where it goes. But right here, he is flinging that truck, and here comes the hood straight towards the camera. And I think the camera is actually up over where the tunnel is. <laughs> and you can see how it just kind of exited out of frame there, I think, that because the tunnel is right underneath where the camera is. At least I don't got to worry about cleaning that up. No, they're, they're just going to put it back there and next truck out. But Matthew Burnett, the scores are big for the Overkill Volution. It's a new leader at a 23.5. Burnett now in the hot seat as the third truck out. What an impressive freestyle run right there from Matthew Burnett. Now, Matt Moso comes on the Reptoid. He's had a very solid and consistent season. Puts him just at the cut line. If he can find a way to have a good run here tonight, he can put him above the cut line, and he can try and compete for a World Finals Championship in two weeks' time. We know Moso, the past few events, he's gotten really big. He's found a way to put out some really good performances. We'll see if tonight can be another one of those crazy performances. Yeah, I'm uh, excited to see what he can do. How long do you think the teeth are going to stay on? I was gonna say, do you even lose one of the one of the bigger ones? It's sitting over there on the pod. I think I just saw. So uh, oh, he's, already, right. he's already lost one, but uh, we'll see how long the rest of them stay on for. Oh, I see it there. Yeah, there it is down there. <laughs> also jumped over it, combed it up nicely there into the next burp. You know, Trey, I always like having that pond in the middle with two obstacles to jump over. It creates some unique situations where drivers can either start cross-threading or they can start comboing up, and it, it can create some interesting scenarios throughout freestyle runs. Yeah, like either that. good or either good or uh you know sometimes they're bad too so yeah uh it, it's just really luck of the draw i mean you think of jester right he almost had a uh, bad experience there but he wow. was able to do well, well holy cow oh and he just hit that berm i think so i'm under two wheels but that was some of the biggest i think it was the biggest air we've seen tonight i think that was over that car stack over there that was he pretty much went straight up more huge air jumping over that berm matt Moses getting crazy in these final 30 or so seconds now he only has 10 seconds to go what more can you do down at this freestyle run? Launching it again over the pod, clearing it with ease, and oh. wheeling over the car stack. Hold on, hold on. Nice, Nicely done. Down. Matt Moso with a very solid run here, Trey. Oh, big air. I mean, even though it doesn't count, but that was nice to sky wheelie into a slap Look wheelie. at this. He's still going He knows the, the plug's up, right? <laughs> I, I don't think he cares, Trey. I think he was happy with this freestyle run. That was a great run, Joe. Do you think? Do you think you could do it? Uh, I I don't know. I mean, I think it had that air assault that Burnett was maybe missing, but I don't know if it had the tricks that Burnett had. So really, it's kind of a a tale of what the judges maybe want. Do they want big air? Do they want the crazy tricks? Well, I think we're gonna find out in a few seconds here, Trey. Oh, so close to going over in such a small area, too. That was a very nice save by Raptor. Yes, it was, and the scores are in. It's going to be a 22, so he's a point and a half short, but we'll move him into a solid second place so far. So a very impressive run there for Matt Moso. Puts him in a second. Now Angel Gutierrez comes on the El Diablo, and this is a driver who has been a little bit frustrated with this season. He's been wanting a top five result, been wanting a top five result. He hasn't been able to find one in... Last week it kind of all came to, to a, a close where he was like, I just I just want a top five in one of these events and everyone finds a way to somehow outperform him. Well, maybe tonight, Trey, he can show that he deserves one of those top five spots. Oh, oh, oh hold on. Maybe with moves that's, like uh, that. That's interesting that he wants a top five. Yeah. Instead of, you know, a top one. Yeah, top I guess I guess <laughs> that's fair, but maybe he's a uh, baby step. You want to first get a top five, you know. Before you can get uh, yeah, top five and top three, then, then win. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll see if Angel Gutierrez, if he gets a top five tonight, maybe it's good enough to move him up inside the top 20 points. And from there, he can try and maybe get that top one at the World Finals. Yeah, I mean, hey, everyone has different plans, and some work, some don't. So yeah, I'll be interested to see how well it works. Sure, that was more huge air off that car stack. I mean, I didn't think that was going to be the obstacle to get the biggest air off of here tonight, but somehow, some way, it's turned into oh. that. Those are some nice cyclones down there. I think he's he's the first truck so far tonight, isn't he? Maybe scored, yeah, I think so. Oh! oh. That was a hard hit, and I don't think anything broke from it. I don't know if he bottomed out or if he just hit the back of the truck on the very end of that, so luckily, it all worked out in his favor here, Joe. He's got 10 seconds oh. left. There goes... Dejawed! Was that the bottom of the jaw? Yeah, that was the jaw! 
that the poor thing. Yeah, that's not. That can't feel good. Oh, that can't feel oh, good tongue. either. Oh my gosh. Oh, oh, and the teeth. He tore the whole mouth off of it. <laughs> he tore it up completely. But he finished. I think he closed out the clock. He did. He filled it to zero with very. This move right here completed the clock to zero and. Once again, just like Reptoid, a very solid run that ended out with some pretty good moves at the end of it. Yeah, I, I'm. I'll be interested to see where the judges think this goes as he completely defaces <laughs> defaces El Diablo. Yeah, remember, twenty three point five is the score to beat from Matthew Burnett and the Overkill Volution. We'll see if this can top it. It's actually going to tie him with Matt Moso, who just went out for second place. A twenty two for Angel Gutierrez in the El Diablo truck. High for second early on as now Derek Vendel comes out in the bad company. A driver trade right around the cut line. If he has a good run here tonight, he won't have to worry about it. This is a driver who had been on a hot streak and then kind of faded off the last event, had a bad run and kind of ruined that momentum, but he could easily build that momentum back up here tonight. So far, Trey, a nice wheelie to kick off the freestyle run. Yeah, I mean, it makes you think Oh, hold on. That was nice. Yeah, I was going to say, I wanted to see how this is going to end up Whoa! first. That was like a pirouette on one tire. That was, that was weird. That was a turn on the on demand right there. I mean, he... He, he, he didn't turned the monster truck, Joe, on a dime. Unless, I think that was a, a, like a, a pinhead. <laughs> I don't I mean, if, if everyone could do that whenever they wanted to, <laughs> could you imagine how quickly we can get these things turned around? Honestly, they'd be hitting a lot more obstacles. And once again, huge air off that car stack. Derek Vendel going big early on here in the bad company and putting out some really good moves. He's halfway through. Nice air again over the pod stack as he lands down. Oh, he's under oh. two wheels. But it's going to roll oh my back. Goodness. Momentum. <laughs> All right. Well, now what does he do? Well, now the clock is frozen at 31 seconds. I think they're going to go down and assess the situation and see if he's all right to refire the truck. Does he have any room to back up there? Because I don't think he can go forward. Well, we're going to oh, see. Well, yeah. Yep, yeah, yeah, he's good. He's uh, just just about. <laughs> it's just about enough room. Clock started back up. He's now back going in the back of the more huge air. Clearing the pod with these as he lands down, turning around. Oh, the same thing! Oh, the no. same thing! Oh my gosh, Trey. Well, we know the track's tacky. Yeah, but I'm shocked little... that that caught him twice. Like, you would think after the first time, he would have been like, all right, maybe take this turn a little bit easier. But the exact same thing happened on the other side, except he didn't have room this time to hit the brakes and let it roll. Like this one right yeah, here. Yeah, this one right here, I think the bouncing of the truck might have might have caused it a little bit. But I don't know if the second one, if he... If the truck was bouncing or if he just took the turn too fast. We have to see right here as we do have a replay for it. That was some nice air. Landed it down perfectly. And we'll have to mention he left about nine seconds on the clock. So while it's not going to be too big of a deduction, it will be I the think deduction. I think he might have tried to turn the truck too soon before it settled down. Yeah, and look at that. He he, knew he was in trouble there. Almost and a uh, obsessed <laughs> reenactment. <laughs> yeah, almost an obsessed moment down there. <laughs> Unfortunately for Fendel, this is not what he needed. He could still be fine, depending on how the rest of the freestyles go here tonight, but the scores are going to leave him a little bit questionable as it's a 7, a 6, and a 6 for only a 19, the second lowest score so far here tonight. We'll try this East Rutherford track. is proving to be difficult as Mathis Wells comes up with third shaker, a driver who has had a mixed season, some good runs, but also some poor runs have put him down below the cut line, I believe in a time with just Zydell below the cut line. So if there's a driver who is going to want to go big here tonight, East Rutherford trying to get himself back above, it might be this man, Mathis Wells. Oh, That was a nice move right there. You know, Joe, it always gets me a little nervous when these guys pop trucks up because I'm so used to them going too much. Yeah, they, they go for like a backflip or something. Yeah, but uh, <laughs> it's nice to see whenever they go for a little bit of a wheel stand. It's a, uh, it's, it's a nice change is what let's call it. <laughs> it's, it's a lot safer for the driver as well. Once again, huge nice air, air off of that car stack. Bicycle a little bit right there, puts it back down. He's now halfway through the run. And it's like he's going to be searching for a backflip ramp. It's been a while since we've seen a, uh, a backflip attempt here. It works that was just probably perfectly. the cleanest one so far. Yeah, that was very nice out of math as well. Now there's about 30 seconds left. Backs up from the backflip ramp. Gunning it towards that one obstacle to clear over the pod. Launching oh, into the no. car stack. He just did a 360 sky wheelie. 
that was amazing. Probably wasn't the cleanest of landings he was hoping for, but he'll definitely take it. Look at He's gonna that. get big air off of the. Oh! oh! That's a four link. Oh. What a uh, hit. Yeah, I don't think he meant to do that. No, I think he was probably not thinking he was going to go that far off of that launch. And he went that far off that launch. He went from such a clean backflip here. <laughs> yeah, it was a very nice backflip to then a little bit less clean of a pure wet, but it still worked out. Yeah, I don't know if he meant to do that either. I think, like you said, I think he might have went a little bit farther than he thought, but it worked out. Okay, so that was the window falling out that I thought was a broken truck. <laughs> Well, yeah, but, well, this I mean, is a broken I truck, wasn't wrong. <laughs> right here. Oh, oh right on the hit. bottom. What a hit. Oh, and then lands on the top of the chassis. This time it's actually broken. Yep. And uh, so it was the shell and, and maybe the driver. Yep. And he had a good run going. Does leave some time on the clock like bad company. We'll see what the judges give Mathis Wells. It's going to be a solid run. It's actually a good time with Nathan Orman in the whiplash at a 21.5 early on. So next out, we have Jay Brando in the El Toro Loco. And we've been on a string of runs of not filling out the clock. The last two trucks, as Brando getting a nice little photo out there for the fans here in East Front. The last two trucks have not filled out the full 90-second clock. We'll see if... Brando can try and change that in the El Toro Loco. He definitely needs to have a good run here tonight if he wants to try and make it to the World Finals in two weeks' time via the points. You know what, uh, you know what uh, not filling out the clock sounds like? What does that sound Yesterday. like? That does. Yesterday. It does, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this week is, well, you know what? They're going big trying to uh, make it to the World Finals. They're uh, you know, forfeiting their, their full 90-second run. Yeah, well, I mean, hey, that just is another thing to where if you're – above the, the cut line or, or close to it. If you just put in a solid run and fill the clock, you might have a pretty good chance. Yeah, exactly. There's, a, there's been so few trucks to fill the clock over these past two events this week where, as you mentioned, if you can just go out there and put out a very solid freestyle run, kind of like what we saw of Nathan Norman in the Whiplash, just fill out the clock and uh, have some good moves in it, you could easily be inside the top half of the finishing results. And Jay Brennan might be taking that approach. He's, he's going kind of crazy, but Trey's not going over, over the top crazy this El Toro Loco truck. I, uh, let's say a controlled chaos. Yeah, oh, well, look out. That was a little bit more out of control. But yeah, <laughs> it is more like a controlled chaos rather than just the chaos that we've seen in very many events. Oh, hold on. That was a nice, good. nice sky wheelie. That was a very nice sky wheelie. He's going to turn it around here. Now what's he going to be looking at? He's going to be looking for the, I guess you can consider that car stack it's like a car maybe? step up stack and that was a nice combination move right there carrying into a wheelie so jay rando he's been very solid but trey hasn't done anything to really differentiate himself from the rest of the runs oh he's well. gone under 10 seconds remaining i mean that he might differentiate himself that was cool but wasn't cool enough and he runs out of time trey sadly this is not going to count it was a nice backflip, though. It was, and the fans will definitely enjoy it. He's not done. He, I don't know, but he might be a little bit aggravated with how this ended up. And Jay Brando going big for the fans here in the El Toro Loco. Oh, oh he's somersaulting over forwards. What? How did he do that? He parked it great. <laughs> that was impressive. If only that was in the, the time. Yeah, that was actually really impressive. That's right. These clips, while they're good, and great highlights, they didn't count for score. Yeah, that, um, if the highlights of your runner after the clock's done, I don't know if that's a good sign, Joe. Yeah, you're definitely, I, I'm sure Randall's going to be a little bit frustrated. And right here. He parked this perfectly. And he doesn't hit the wall. That's impressive. <laughs> I, I, I don't know how that makes any sense. Well, Rando did it. And the scores are in from the judges and. Yeah, it's only going to be a 21.5. Remember, those two highlights that we shown were after the 90 seconds had expired for Rando. So that is now a three-way tie with Nathan Ormond, Mathis Wells, and Jay Brandon. We'll see how that tie break gets broken as now Cody Anderson comes out in the Pirates. Gerson, think about his last event tray. A very impressive freestyle run, but just got beat at the end of the event. Still came with a very good result. Got some good points. And now if he can have a good run here tonight, he could point his way up into the top 20 and make it to the World Finals. Oh. And he is going big from the get-go. 
I was going to ask how many ties we have so far tonight, because I feel like it's a lot. Yes, yeah, so we have that three-way tie, and then we have that tie at the 22 with Matt Moso and Angel Gutierrez. Huh. Well, someone wake the judge up, just in case. Yeah, that, well, I mean, he has to be woken up anyway, because he's still... He still still yeah. ties, even if they're not for the win. He's getting, he's getting overtime this week. Yes, he is. He, uh, <laughs> he determined the winner uh, last night, and now here he is going to be determining a lot of <laughs> positions today. Cody Anderson so far putting out a very impressive freestyle. He's halfway through, and there goes another very nice backflip. I think this one will get counted. And he didn't have to uh, back up for it. That is very good. He's going to get some nice air comboed on top of the center of the pod section. Triple nice. combo off the back side of the, I guess Ooh. we consider that the MX? No, that's not really the MX. Though. That was a quick turnaround, too, for Cody oh. Anderson. Up on two wheels, nicely put back down. He is, we talked about control chaos. He is out of control in this Pirates Curse truck. No, but it's working for him right now. The truck's still on all four tires with 10 seconds remaining. What else can he do? He's got to have to turn this thing around again really quickly here. The truck gave him a little bit of trouble. Three seconds, two. He's going to get the hit in. Whoa, look out. Oh. Cody Anderson flung the truck through the oh. air. Is it going to come over? No. <laughs> but still an impressive end to the run and a very high octane run. I mean, that, that run had a lot of great momentum throughout it. It may have been lacking some of the wow factors like we saw of Matthew Burnett, but the momentum was so far, I think, unmatched of any run. Yeah, that was, uh, like you said, it was a little bit of uncontrolled chaos, but Joe, he made it work for him. Yes, he did, and right here, finally at the end of the run, right at zero, he ends up destroying the truck and flinging it around upside down the, go the Pirate's Curse goes, and Remember, the score to beat is a 23.5 from Matthew Burnett in the Overkill Evolution. We'll see if Cody Anderson was able to top that score. The three judges give their results, and they show straight 7.5s to move him into second place at a 22.5 for Cody Anderson. Well, Trey, if you can believe it, we're already down to the final five trucks in this event. The first of them, Aaron Abel in the Monster Mutt Dalmatian. He's already above the cut line entering this event. However, some insurance if you can go out there and just get a very solid freestyle run, maybe even just top 10 freestyle run tray, we know he'll be locked into the World Finals on points. The only thing that can really knock him out are the drivers that can maybe point above if they have good enough runs here tonight. So he's got 60% chance. 70. I, I'd put it at like a 75-80% chance. He, uh, can still fall out, but I I don't see it happening. Look out for that dumpster down there. Yeah, that is a really randomly placed dumpster. It's also weird down here at the other end where there's three dumpsters there by the backflip, but if you go to the other side of the backflip, there's no dumpsters on that side. I wonder who put this track together. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, oh no. no. There goes a wheel at half way and the oh, wheel what the leg oh no what is it doing the wheel just, oh the wheel flipped him did the wheel just get revenge in front of our eyes and look at it's rolling away it's happy as could be it's skipping away we just watched the wheel take revenge i <laughs> I, I don't know what to say i can't believe that just happened i've never seen anything like that the wheel Whoa. got caught if the wheel stays there he's fine he's gonna be a hard run but he's gonna continue it's not, it's not running at all look it where does it get? It got caught up in the other one. I've never seen anything like that before. It's like that wheel just did not. It was either not going to let the truck move or it was going to end the run if it started moving. It was. Oh, my God. Aaron, that was terrible luck for Aaron Abel. And then you can see the wheel in the background. Like you said, just giving away. Yeah, and the scores are going to reflect how much time was left on the clock. It's only a 12. That is the lowest score for Aaron Abel. Danger zone, possibly. So it was the complete opposite of what Aaron Abel wanted. Another driver who enters above the cut line into this event, it's Keegan Thompson in the Northern Nightmare. Once again, just needs a solid run. Nothing extreme, nothing major, but Trey, if he can do a good enough run here tonight, he's back to the World Finals after two seasons of missing. So don't choke. Yeah, hopefully he doesn't. And uh, Keegan this season has been very, very consistent. He's been right around fifth place in every event. So if he can just replicate something like that, not even fifth place, just eighth place would probably be good enough for Keegan Thompson to ensure a spot into the top 20 points and a spot at Las Vegas. So he just has to fill the clock. <laughs> just fill the clock out, Keegan. And 
I'm sure I, I'm sure he probably knows some of that situation. And, you know, this season, Trey, he has been much calmer in his freestyle runs. He had adopted the strategy of going really big from the get-go, and that had been working out for him. So he's kind of back to that, let's relax at the start, and then go big towards the end. And it's worked out for him so far this season, and it looks like Trey's doing much of the same here in this freestyle run. Yeah, I mean, there's been multiple times in the... Okay, there's been multiple times in the past where we've seen that strategy work out for a lot of people and they've made multiple world final appearances i mean there's nothing wrong with starting out your run slow and slowly building that momentum as long as you can almost guarantee yourself filling out the clock here he goes for a backflip he just had a nice sky really down there as he goes for a backflip but it oh. twisted him around and now he's into the wall and he has to back up that was a little odd there i thought you were gonna go for a backflip <laughs> yeah oh look or out. i guess a backflip got a little crazy there oh my goodness oh my goodness right at zero. Oh, he didn't park it as well as el toro loco did <laughs> he had a little bit too much momentum going into that one i think well he filled out the clock that last move i would think should count yeah it was a part of that move that hit right at zero so for keegan thompson it might not be the best run of the night but i think it's gonna be just good enough to move him up in the points and Put him in a pretty good spot for the uh, for the World Finals. Yeah, I'm going to be curious to see what the judges feel about it. This is what ended up ending his run. Came oh so close to saving it, but Joe, he had to put on those brakes because that wall came a yep. lot closer and uh, ended up putting it on his lid. And he didn't want to be one to go into the uh, the safety hold, and uh, fortunately Keegan did have a little bit of a brain there and hit the brakes. The scores are in, and just again, straight 7.5s, and it ties him for second place with Cody Anderson in the Pirates' Curse. And then there were three, and one of the three is Bronson Minnick and the Avenger. Trey, think about last event where he had such a good run going, but ended up just a few seconds short of filling the clock, and that may have been just enough to keep him from the event win because he lost by half a point. So here this week, maybe some revenge in store for Bronson Minnick and the Avenger, who, oh, by the way, enters above the cut line, just like Keegan Thompson, just like Aaron Abel, and just a solid run would be good enough for Bronson Minnick to advance to the World Finals. It's a, uh, oh, oh, my goodness. No. Oh, no. But sure, he saved it so he could still go, but obviously three wheels is going to be a big hindrance. At least this wheel didn't flip the truck over. No, it did not. That wheel is just sitting <laughs> over there right now. And I'm, I'm actually Ooh. shocked that the, uh, the truck was able to come back on the, the three wheels in his uh, oh my gosh. Yeah, he's really struggling right now. Oh, he got up stuck? Yeah, he's a... Uh, oh, oh. Is he actually stuck? <laughs> he might be. Let's see. Oh, he's able to back oh, okay. down. Reverse works. <laughs> well, the judges can at least give him an effort award, right? Yeah, this is this is great effort. I'm loving what I'm seeing here. Nice air right there. He's just got... I mean, honestly, if you're going to lose a wheel, I'd rather it be a front wheel yeah. compared to a rear one, right? Yeah. But... For losing the real one, he's, he's doing pretty well. Yeah, this is honestly, I mean, the crowd is on their feet. Mostly because we never really see stuff like this, but, uh, I mean, Minnick is really going for it. He is hammering this truck. Oh, my Look at goodness. This. Is he going to save it? Oh, my oh, gosh, he did. He did it. He saved it. Oh, oh maybe not. <laughs> no. It's he almost saved it. It's smoking over there. Look at it. Look how much abuse he put it through. <laughs> he almost saved it. Well, this well. Is, oh, it just snapped off, and some of the momentum kicked it back onto its wheels, and he was able to put out one heck of a freestyle run for the fans here in East Rutherford. And, uh, Trey, it, it definitely was not the best run of the night, but you have to give massive props to Bronson Minnick for making the most out of something that was very little. Yeah, he uh, he definitely put in all the effort he could right here. I don't know if this will count as a save or not. I'm going to say it will. I'd, I'd count it. And then this doesn't count? <laughs> yeah, that's – I think th I'd count that as after the save. All right, well, good enough. Yeah, I mean, the effort he put in was phenomenal. It was, and it should be, you know, while not – maybe not top half, it should be a very solid score for Bronson Mick and the Avenger. Straight sevens will show that, so it's a 21 – not too bad, moves him into ninth place so far here tonight. And then there were two. Justin Zidell and Gravedigger amping the fans up here in East Rutherford because Tramp sure he's about to go big. 
he enters below the cut line. Last season's World Finals champion is in danger of missing the cut here this season. Oh. All right, he's good. You know, uh, this team here, they always go big, and I feel like more than half the time, it ends after the first couple of hits just because they put the truck through so much stress. Oh, 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 like that, Trey! Like that, just like no, that! Oh, like that exactly! Oh my gosh! What a save! That 20 seconds in the run, and he already does something amazing. Well, I was saying that uh, they always put that tr truck at risk. Yep, well, he put it at risk right there. Now he's going to do some donuts, celebratory probably, but... Trey, if you're a fan of trends, here's a, here's a trend for you. The past two events have been won by two different Grave Digger drivers. Johnny Hernandez, two events ago. Last event, Eli Bright. Could say they'll make it three for three to end out the regular season and enter the road finals on mass momentum for Team Grave Digger. Definitely has a good chance to, Joe, but number one rule, got to fill out a clock. That's true. Matthew Burnett did that. He's still in the hot seat. Remember, he was the third truck out. That 23.5 is still sitting on top, but just inside Delta with 30 seconds left is doing everything he knows to try and beat it. Once again, remember, he's below the cut line entering this event. He does not want to miss the World Finals one season after winning it. Oh, easy there. Yep. He's yeah, this yeah. truck. He is uh, absolutely putting it through its paces right now. Joe's only got 10 seconds. He's got to fill out left, so at the moment, oh. he's looking pretty good. Stuffed into the ground. He's still willing, trying to turn. Can he get one final move out? Here we go. The final second. They're taking down right at zero. He hits. It's a massive launch. Oh, oh my good. Oh, oh he's upside down. Forwards. Joe, the flat top did it again. I don't think he cares, though. He finished the clock out. That was amazing. Definitely his best run of the season. And all the catalyst of it, all right here, 20 seconds in. This was this was a driver saying, "I am not finishing a run early again." Yeah, wow. that is the, that is very true, and he did a great job at it. Yes, he did. And then right here, this final move, which came right at zero, it will count. A huge air assault! Oh my gosh, he went over forwards from the hit on the rear of the truck. Yeah, and the, Joe, that flat top again. Yeah, just skidded to a stop and. The three judges have already given us their scores, and they are enough for the lead out of 25. Justin Zidell into the hot seat with just one truck remaining, and he's Rutherford. Well, Trey, how fitting is it that the schedule got Jordan Stout out last year in the Max D? He is the one driver in this event that can win the division, or th that can win the series championship. He has to win here tonight, East Rutherford. If he wins, he knocks Eli Bright out of the series championship. Who does he have to beat to win this event? But Eli's teammate, Justin Zeidel. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Who you got your money on? Well, Trey, this is this is pure Team Max D versus Team Gravedigger, and my money is on the fans winning this one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't think the fans can go wrong here. No, I mean, did you see that air he got off that car stack for the first hit? I think Jordan Stout is here to win. And you know what? After last week, I might be the one rooting for him because remember that one judge, Trey, who kind of underscored him? And Stout lost out. Many people thought he should have won. Stout was the one person that said to, to DeLello after the event was, don't knock yourself because you thought I did better. You deserved it. Good win. So Stout, while probably not the happiest about it, didn't go full rage about it. So, I mean, maybe the good guy could win here tonight. It might just be me, but do you ever feel like Stout's the kind of guy who you think should have a lot of wins and just gets taken away from him, like, yeah. in weird situations? Yeah, he's had, he's had some very good freestyle runs <laughs> over his career. Oh, my oh. gosh. He's wow, that was really smooth. this truck. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Oh. oh. Nicely stopped, but he has to back this up. It's going to hurt a little bit. Yeah, that's going to hurt, but... He could possibly make up for it here in these last 20 seconds if everything goes his way. Oh, my gosh. He is going for broke here into the final 15 seconds. But, Trey, I, I think to say he needs a wow factor in these final few seconds. Yeah, he definitely needs something to oh. go here. Nice air off of that. He's going to put it on two wheels. Oh, look we'll out. Go upside down oh. into the fence. Yep, that, uh, that's not going to work. No, it's not. The run does end at zero seconds, so he filled the full 90 seconds. What do you think, Trey, if you're a judge here? 25 is the score to beat in the whole season. 
relies on these three judges right here putting in their scores. You better hope you make the right choice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. But yeah, Max D went absolutely, or I guess I should say Max D XX yep. 20, 20, yeah. 20. That's right. It was Roman numerals. But yeah, right here, possibly could have had it saved, but oh. that's another, that's another truck Joe that goes into the uh, stands. Yeah. He, uh, he got his wheel in the front row, but Trey, the three judges are putting their scores in 25, the score to beat. We'll have to see. Not quite enough. It's a tie for second at 23.5. So Trey, Justin Zidell makes it three for three for Gravedigger. Jordan Stout gets second in the tiebreaker from Matthew Burnett, but he'll fall just short of the series championship. It goes to Zidell's teammate, Eli Bright. Well, Team Gravedigger wins. <laughs> how? I mean, how about that? <laughs> what drama in the final week to come down to that and to come down to a Max D versus a Gravedigger? That just brings back classic vibes, doesn't it? It does. That is like 2004 like the peak rivalry between Tom Benz and Dennis Harrison one-upping each other every single time they went out there. It's kind of like what it reminded me of. But now we're going to know, Trey, the official 20 trucks that made it. The numbers in black mean they made it. So Eli Bright, division champion by three points. Stout makes it. Chung, Jericho, Johnny Hernandez, Sarderland, Zydell moves up big. DeLello, Thompson, Stapleton, Abel does make it. Then you have Minnick, Seaman, and Fitzwater. They're all in. That's the first 14. The final six to make it to the World Finals. And it's oh so close down here, Trey, in this second page. And we're going to see the numbers in black versus the numbers in red to see those who make it and don't. The final six in on points, Anthony Hernandez, Lathan Strickland, Ryan Wilson, Griffin Lynn, Cody Anderson, and Sarah Kirchner gets the final spot. Trey, just two points between Kirchner and Jay Rando in the El Toro Loco. And look at some of the big names down here that missed it. Derek Fendel. Johnny Cox, Mathis Wells, and Trey. The next page, there's even bigger names. I mean, what stories entering into the last chance events? Look at down here. Max Davis and Max D misses it. I mean, Joe, who do you think's going to take the last couple of spots to get in? Because there's how many spots are available? Four spots available across the two events. So it's two from each event. We have some really big names, which means we're going to have some really big names left out. Noah Clifton is down here. He, looked, he scored the second fewest points this season and next week we're going to determine which of these final drivers these 22 drivers will fill the final four spots in the world finals in two weeks time